Perth Linux Users Group, talking Linux and open source. Yes, yes, I'm here, John McKay of Densted, and I'm here to present I learned scalable vector graphics, and all I made was this lousy t-shirt. Um, so this t-shirt was a test. It's even worse. I did also a test on the back as well. So um, this was sort of like my first attempt. Uh, the shirt on the slide here is a, is a little, was um, the next one, so that was a bit better. Uh, in that one, uh, I also simplified the design a bit, so there are these little holes, like, for example, a letter O doesn't have a hole in the middle anymore, so there was less to mess up. Um, I also made a vaguely space-themed, you're going to die soon t-shirt, which was a lot simpler and a lot easier to make. So like these t-shirts, the more complicated ones, are taking about an hour. So in any case, why was I making these? Um, well, I've been the secretary of the Genghis Khan and been the treasurer for the last few years, uh, and they're a, um, aim to be an affordable convention. So they have a very minimal budget. Um, Inkscape is free as in speech, which is sort of nice because we do like to keep control of what we do, but we particularly don't like spending money. Um, now, the major form of Inkscape is SVG, and for example, Adobe Illustrator might be what the traditional thing to use for this type of thing, but it would be a significant part of our budget. So, um, so SVG is XML. Um, so, for example, you can specify view box, what part of the virtual thing you're doing. You can specify where, where you want particular objects. You can specify a rectangle uh, starting at zero with a given width and height. Um, and an opacity of the middle, so that you have sort of a slight gray, but a stronger black on the outside. Uh, the hash 000 is just a short way of saying black. Um, so each uh, RGB value is represented by a single hexadecimal character. In this case, uh, it also supports using two characters if you want. Um, but for vector graphics, often the exact color doesn't matter so much because you don't need um, to specify smooth gradients and, and those colors. Um, and we could also have like some text, so you can put, for example, Alice in the middle there. Um, and one of the nice things that this is like a text format is that you can just use your favorite Linux or Unix text utilities, like said, or do something like replace Alice with Bob and get yourself another scale of vector graphics file. Um, uh, the other thing about scale vector graphics files is, of course, they're scalable. So if you zoomed in really, really close, that would still, that the nice round letters would still be um, like curves, not sort of jagged, like you would get, not they, get, they wouldn't get the jaggies like you would with a um, traditional sort of more rasterized format. Um, so it's XML, so it can be played around with at the XML level. Um, so, for example, in JavaScript, you can go grab get document get element up ID to grab some element of the of this scalable vector graphics file, uh, and then use set attribute to set a particular thing. For example, setting the transform to rotate it um, by some amount. Uh, and in this case, we're uh, using JavaScript. Um, the, the set interval functions which animate it. So, uh, for example, in Inkscape, Inkscape can work pretty well with the SVG or P PDFs, um, but PDF files, you wouldn't really load them 100 times a second into a uh, web browser to animate something. They tend to be quite heavyweight. I think Adobe Acrobat might take 10 minutes to load, not 10 minutes, 10 seconds to load or something. Um, so you can do it at the text or XML level, um, but for a picture, you generally want to um, like see what you're doing and move things around. So whereas it might be, you might use edit on a text level, so you can specify that two objects line up exactly and are exactly 40 millimeters along. Um, that's convenient, or, or fiddle around with uh, programs around the text. 
to make it a complex um, picture, you probably want uh, to use a tool like Inkscape, which is probably the, uh, the sort of standard open source tool to use for vector graphics. Um, here is. Oops. Nope. Maybe I should have closed some of these windows. Okay. So um, it's, I find Vic Inkscape to be a pretty standard sort of GUI. Um, so I don't have a lot of gotchas to, to warn you how to get over. Uh, one thing I've noticed is that when you import an SVG into another, into another SVG in Inkscape, it makes it rasterized, it makes it look ugly. Uh, I'm not really sure why. This was considered a good idea, but apparently it has something to do with the um, specification of SVG that Inkscape uses as its native file format. Um, so that's the only real gotcha. Um, so one of the things about Inkscape is it also supports um, can use a pen. Uh, like most things, I mean, you can use a pen just like a mouse uh, in most programs, but Inkscape also supports um, pressure sensitive. So if you draw light, um, you'll get a, a thin line, whereas if you draw more heavily, you'll get a thicker line, which makes it pretty much like just drawing with a pen. So if you can use a pen, you can probably use Inkscape. There you go. Um, So this particular image here wasn't really made in Inkscape. Um, there was the text was added. Uh, but in this case, we had like a hand drawing that an artist gave us. And we um, just used a website to convert the PNG file into SVG. So if you do a web search for PNG to SVG, you'll probably get a something that will vectorize images for you. Yeah, quality. Oh, yeah. So, yes, apparently Inkscape can do that as well. Um, although, yeah, I don't know. So, Inkscape uh, can do things a little bit more fancy than just putting um, Alice or Bob into a little box. Um, this is the sort of thing that people have managed to do with Inkscape. Um, So one of the things I want to do is there's a utility in, in, in Linux called mpage. But what if you want to shrink like a duplex document? Um, that doesn't seem to be very directly supported by mpage because if you just use mpage and then flip the document over, you'll have one side of one page sitting on the other. Like if you're putting multiple badges uh, and you put the badge the left of the badge here, and then you flip it around, the right of the badge is going to go on the other side, and it's not very good. But you can fiddle around with SVG, for example. So this is the uh, design of a badge that we're using, and this is uploaded onto the web, and so it changes the font. But there you go, there's my deliberate mistake. Um, so yes, so uploading an SVG from Inkscape to the web um, can be uh, an issue. So generally, I'm just going to use uh, PNGs with this sort of thing where there's a complex fonts happening. Um, the other thing, what can be the gotcha is that I've noticed sort of bugs when you're including SVGs into other SVGs. So for the badges, I decided to just convert the fancy graphics into a PNG, and then that solved the problem. And for the badges, tiny thing looked fine. Got on with my life. Um, uh, and the other thing here is that there's got these two badge names here. One thing about the SVG format is it doesn't seem to support word wrap. So if you have a long name, you probably want, in this case, we decided to have two badge names, um, badge name line one and somewhere down here, badge name line two. Uh, and so we can split up people long names into two uh, two lines, sort of manually. Um, and so, but taking this as input, um, after like 450 lines of Perl, um, we can grab the names from the web of all the names and tickets. 
Oh, Sodi Podi name view. Does anyone want to claim to know what Sodi Podi is? Uh, I, well, I imagine Nick knows the answer since he told me. But oh yes, yes, yep. So you Sodi Podi was a fork of no, Inkscape was the fork of Sodi Podi. Yep, and the kind of the more commonly used fork. Um, although I understand that Sodi Podi still exists and is somewhat maintained. Um, anyway, um, and that's where so there's a Sodi Podi name view, which is like the XML name um, that you need to use to tell Inkscape to support multiple pages. Uh, basically, it just breaks down the viewport, it says this part of the viewport is this page, that part of the viewport is that page. So the sort of underlying SVG is still just one big, huge graphic, but um, that allows you to divide up in pages. Um, so this script also does four in a page and duplex, and does it in such a way it sort of reverses the order when you so that if you flip it over and print the other side, um, you get the same person's name on the front and the back of the badge, which is a plus. It has a bit of logic to split the name into one or two lines, as mentioned. And then finally, once we've created an SVG like this, we can just tell Inkscape to convert it back to a PDF, uh, which for printing. Um, oh, and it also supports um, printing out sort of premium larger badges as well. Um, so once you have an SVG, however you've made it, um, oh, you can, um, so for example, if you're going to Redbubble, you want to, they want PNGs for some reason. So um, the, the downside of converting to a PNG is that if you, you, if you zoom in enough with a PNG, no matter how much, you know, how, what resolution you choose, eventually you're going to get little jaggies. Uh, and so in general, even for something in the real world, which has a sort of limited uh, precision, um, Converting a PNG is generally going to increase the size of the file while decreasing quality. Um, another reason why you might not want to convert to SVG PNG is because when you've got an actual ink cutter like this, it, it kind of needs, it needs to move a, a, a blade in a particular direction. So even a very high resolution PNG is not directly useful to the um, uh, cutter. Um, well, you could convert it to Adobe Illustrator. The um, question is why. Uh, once we had found that the only people in Perth who supported uh, basically clothes for larger people wanted Adobe Illustrator files. We didn't really know why, uh, and it was a bit of a pain in pain because um, if you want to convert... Uh, I mean, if you want to give an SVG to AI with Adobe Illustrator, it's, it's trivial. It's Adobe Illustrator supports SVG. You just insert it, you just open it, and save it. But if you're not an Adobe Illustrator shop, um, anything on the web, it wants to rasterize it, then it just secretly does that. So you have something which looks OK on the screen, but you can't print. Um, so we found a free as in bear tool, but uh, generally something we want to avoid. Um, good print shops should support, S I mean, SVG is a fairly standard thing, and even if they don't support SVG, I mean, if they're like, you don't have to be a open source zealot, uh, if you're an Adobe proprietary zealot, is the Adobe PDF format, which is quite adequate for porting documents from one place to another. Um, so, uh, printing the, t getting someone to print a t-shirt, um, it's less than $20 if you do it in bulk and you shop around. Um, or you could get yourself a some sort of one of these things. Uh, is this attached? No, that's not attached to anything too important. Oh, okay. So this is the uh, Cricut Maker 3, I believe. Um, I, as I recall, we got it on special. Um, but uh, currently, $559 at Office Works. Um, 
Now, hidden inside the machine, uh, no, no, it is attached to something. Uh, that's sorry, my um, headset suddenly got attached to the carpet maker. It's uh, Anyway, so there's these little hook things. Um, the thing is, with a Cricut uh, or generally any ink cutter, it um, it doesn't it, it cuts the vinyl. It doesn't remove it. So whereas with a traditional printer, you just feed it through, and in the highly unlikely case that the printer doesn't mess up somehow, you've got a something that's final ready to be used. But with vinyl, you need to weed the bits of the vinyl that have been cut but not removed off. So if, for example, you have the O, you'd need to push out that little tiny uh, hole in the middle of the O. Um, so uh, when holding events, these things can be kind of expensive if you want to hold a, a you know, have 30 people cutting vinyl at once. Uh, but needles work pretty well as well. And I'll just get my glasses so I can see what I'm presenting. Um, and it does support Linux, because Android is Linux. Um, I don't think Aunt Richard Stallman officially approves of the Scrackit Design Space proprietary app, which is some random proprietary license. Um, but it does import SVG. So once you've, we've got an, um, this is what my flatmate wants. I sort of bought her for them as a present. And I use it because that's what we have. Uh, and I'm not tied into this anyway because it's it's what the Crycat Design Space app wants is an SVG file as input. And so you can take that very standard file and put it anywhere. For example, on one of these, which I understand the Artifactory has one. I tried to look up the price, but everyone just lists there's price on application, which as I understand means that um, if you actually knew the price, you'd die of a heart attack. Uh, so they're not telling you for... Okay. Uh, apparently, it's just old and out of stock. But um, I imagine that knew it would have cost a bit anyway. Um, and this um, it can be driven completely with open source software like Inkscape and InkCut. So I imagine InkCut is like a driver thing that Inkscape uses. Um, so the sort of vinyl we were using is sort of buying a bulk lot of vinyl for $42. Uh, works out to about a dollar per sheet, um, minus like a 50th of a cent or something. Um, so 12 by 10 is a fairly good size for printing onto a T-shirt. So if you want to have a full-size um, uh, print, this is something you might want. Um, one disadvantage of this type is it's a bit... You might notice with this sort of demonstration thing is... I mean, I could have done a better job putting it on, but sort of peeling off. Uh, so for complicated designs, you might really want uh, a better vinyl. Um, but potentially you could do a full... Uh, I mean, as, as I showed at the beginning, you can make it work. Uh, so what you probably want is like heat transfer or HTV or iron-on. That's what matters. It's the fundamental thing. I think you can get vinyl that's specifically designed, for example, the Cricut vinyl cutter. Um, but it just cuts things. So if it's vaguely similar, it should work. You don't really need um, to cry on a little vinyl. Uh, what is quite important is if you want to put on a T-shirt, that you get T-shirt or fabric vinyl. Um, See if I can find an example. <clears throat> I mean, these things look pretty much the same, but I believe this is, is like to like put on a car or something. Whereas this is uh, something that you'd put on a t-shirt. So. You can cut whichever one you want with the vinyl cricket cutter or, or whatever, but the um, 
it's not going to stick unless you get the right type of the fabric that you want. Um, I mean, which, which fabric probably doesn't matter too much, but don't put a T-shirt vinyl on a car or vice versa. Uh, and don't put your grandfather's favorite music through the vinyl cutter either. Um, so this is a sort of a higher end thing. So you can have things that uh, rainbow or gold or, uh, or silver. Um, best of looking, it's a bit better to, uh, depending on your preferences, obviously, also a bit easier to uh, 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 iron on, tends to stick a bit better. Um, but at the end of the day, one of the things about vinyl is it's always a bit fragile. You don't really want to put uh, a vinyl shirt through a like heavy wash. You'd want to wash cold and gentle, inside out, everything you can do to um, stop the wear on the vinyl. Um, but one of the other things we, we used to print on was the tote bag. So um, the cheapest we found was like $2 from Spotlight, so that's quite good for just giving, giving, giving it a try. Um, and for example, we on sold it to $5, sort of like a small profit, and also covering a bit of the cost of vinyl that we were supplied with it um, to people. Um, to uh, attended com. Uh, if you really want to print on a woman's t-shirt, the next one up is like a, a woman's t-shirt. The, the woman's t-shirts have a little bit less fabric and tend to be cheaper. So for example, you can get a woman's t-shirt for like 250 from Kmart. Um, and then again, we sort of sold that on for $5, have various sizes. The cheap t-shirts only come in a few colors, um, but it's, uh, quite good for doing a test print. So I probably, in retrospect, should have done my test print on a, like a, a cheap $2.50 woman's shirt or even a tote bag. Um, and men's t-shirts are, are more typical in a way. They sort of something you could, anyone, if you have a generic t-shirt that anyone would wear, it's probably called a men's t-shirt. Um, but they you have more fabric and a bit more expensive. So um, if anyone wants to go over any of the slides, um, it's all online. Um, also, there were some links, I, as I recall, uh, during the presentation. So the obvious way to get those is to uh, go to the presentation and... and, and um, Uh, click on them. Um, so, did uh, Nick wants to do a demonstration of Inkscape or? Right. 